Hey, it's Amy and I teach you how to make money with your art. I am embellishing this painting of mine called Solitude. And I wanted to jump on here to show you how I do this so that you can do this with your own paintings. This is a way for you to um, make extra money off of your painting, especially if you created this with just um, craft paints, right? Which I've done a lot of. If you follow me, you know that. So hello, Patty. Thanks for being here. Um, so anyway, for my own customers, uh, like I said, I usually, um, for quick, fast acrylic paintings, I will use like a li uh, liquid you know, like the craft paints, like Apple Barrel or Art Deco or something like that. Art Deco is a little bit, you know, um, heavier than the regular um, Apple Barrel. But so what I did was I created this whole painting solitude with um, liquid craft paints. And now what I'm doing is I'm using my handheld palette here and some heavier bodied paints and basically like my tube paint. So I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I'm using. Um, I'm, I have like my master's touch. I'm not too picky about the paints as long as it has some body to it, some heavier body. So I also have some basic, sorry about the dog, and uh, the Windsor Newton, really love that. Let me know what kind of paints you like to use. Now, I am an acrylic painter. Of course, I can use other mediums as well, but acrylics are my specialty. So I'm going to show you um, what I do, and it really, I'm hoping you can see on camera, uh, because it really does add this really cool embellishment by using some of your heavier body paints to just add like little extras onto your painting. Now when I do this, and I put this into my um into my collector's group for all of my art customers, um, I can actually charge put a price tag on this for like up to 10 between i would say on an average between 10 and 50 dollars more depending on what i use for supplies because we have to add that in and then what i spend on for time because as you know with painting we can sit here and do all kinds of really cool things right so think about have like an idea in your mind of what you're going to sell it for price point wise so that you know what you want to put into it for time i'm just going to pull you up really quick here on my laptop which is behind you so i can see what you're all saying um, so go ahead and join in the combo. Let me know where you're watching from. And I'm going to show you this super simple technique. Um, if you have a beautiful painting that you have done with just liquid craft paints and how to embellish it with some heavier bodied paints. Hello, Lisa. Thank you for watching and thank you for saying hi. All right, so I, I'm just using like a round brush here. And, um, you know, depending on what your painting looks like, maybe you painted this with me if you did the paint in uh, business challenge. Um, or if you're a creative warrior, this design is inside of the membership. Um, so what I'm doing is you can still see like right in here and here. Um, actually, I'm going to actually take my phone off here for a second so that you can get a better view before... Um, I start. So on this tree, um, I don't know if you can tell the difference on camera, but I have started embellishing with heavier body paints on um, on the yellow here, the yellow tree. I put a couple of uh, little uh, strokes in here with heavier body paint on this, but this tree mostly is just like the regular craft paint. Can you tell the difference where I st I'm starting to put on my heavier body paints right here? This one is totally just solely my um, my liquid craft paints on here. So um, I'll give you like a quick view. I'm still not done in here. I'm going to add some depth in here as well with different highlights and low lights. But I just wanted you to get a closer look on um, what the painting did look like. You know, I started, I was talking to my friend Michelle, we were having a great conversation today while I was working on this piece to add some extra embellishments. And then I'm like, hey, why don't I just jump on and show you all how I'm doing this. So if you haven't texted me yet, you can go ahead and text me, get on my list. It's my number's right here. And I would love to have you so that you know when I'm going live. All right, so I'm gonna work some more right here on this orange uh, fall tree. And I'm just going to mix up my orange by using 
Oh, this has started to dry here a little bit, but I'm just mixing my a little dab of red into my yellow to make orange. Maybe you already have, um, you know, orange in your your tube paints, which is totally fine, or you can mix it like I do. And I'm the kind of painter that doesn't really like to mix it totally. And I like to, for this, I'm just kind of gobbing it right onto my brush. And I'm just taking my, my time to just add in these little um, embellishments because like I said, it really like adds to the value of your painting and looks totally beautiful. Yes, you can paint an entire painting with you know, your heavier bodied paints that, um, you know, we know costs more money. So that's totally fine though. If you're selling your paintings for a higher end price, then you go for it. But if you are the kind of painter like me who likes to sell some quick, fast acrylic paintings, um, you typically for under a hundred dollars, then, um, this is what I usually do is I usually paint it with my fluid craft paints and then I come back over and add some of these um, beautiful little <clears throat> um, textured um, embellishments, right? This is what I call it anyway. Uh, go ahead. You may ask me anything that you want and join in the combo. I actually have to get some more yellow on my palette. And I will come back and take a look if I happen to miss what you're saying while I'm painting. Um, hello, Lane. Thanks for being here, honey. And thanks for coming to the uh, Zoom brainstorm session yesterday with Creative Warriors. That was super fun to see you. And I'm glad things are going awesome in your business. You might, I don't know, you might hear some weird sounds here because I'm trying to uh, get my yellow <clears throat> onto my palette here and... We don't all know how that goes. Um, this one I'm using Permanent Yellow uh, Basics by Liquitex. And like I say, I don't really, I'm not really too concerned. I'm just like fly by the seat of my pants type of gal. <laughs> I'm not really like too concerned exactly on the brand and this and that. Unless I'm doing like a special commission um, for a higher dollar amount, then I'm really gonna pay attention. But when I'm just creating stuff that I like to create, I'm just like, I just kind of feel it and just kind of go with it and, you know, work like that. Um, great. Lisa said she can see the difference. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and, and Lane said she really enjoyed that. Thanks for being here, Aslan. I appreciate that. Hello, Gail, a.k.a. Creative Warrior. Um, all right. So I'm just going to continue to go along and embellish my painting here so if you have any questions you most certainly can go ahead and ask um like i said i will check intermittently to see what's happening um if you're watching for the first time let me know too because i always like to know that uh, but once again i'm just work uh, don't you just love fall but especially being artists right because fall um, autumn, however you want to say it, is just so absolutely gorgeous. And literally, this is these are like my favorite types of paintings um, to do other than abstracts because abstracts really, I love, love, love non-representational art, uh, creating abstracts. Uh, but I do love doing all these beautiful fall scenes. And um, I just get inspired by this time of year <clears throat> and I'm up here in New Hampshire. Let me know where you're watching from. But it's already, <clears throat> the leaves are already starting to change on our trees. Um, I just grabbed some oil the other day <laughs> at a delivery because uh, I did have to turn the heat on yesterday because it was a little chilly. But so we're starting to get these beautiful colors around where I live and um, I would love to know if you're like me and really get inspired by nature um, to create your paintings. I love being outside in nature. I love taking a walk every day and just looking at the beauty in the world. And, you know, that's where I, I grab my inspiration from. Typically, I take photos and then I recreate those into, into paintings. Uh, but this one, actually, Solitude here, 
Um, and I created this a, a while back, probably a couple of years ago. I, I just kind of used my imagination for this piece, which is kind of different than what I usually do. Unless I'm doing, like I said, non-representational uh, type of art, abstract art. But um, for the most part, I like to look at something. But yeah, I kind of impressed myself with this one. Uh, I've already sold this piece a few times. So this is a you know, recreation of my original that I did. It's still an original painting, uh, but as I sell my pieces uh, to my art customers, I go ahead and recreate them if I know that they're, you know, if they're good sellers. But right now, if you're just catching me, I'm just showing you how I'm embellishing my uh, painting that I've titled Solitude, that I painted the entire painting with liquid craft paints, and now I'm using some of my heavy body paints just to add some beautiful texture. And of course, um, the heavy body paints, you know, they cost a little bit more for us, uh, for art supplies, but it really makes a difference when you add that um, beautiful touch onto your paintings. Now, I'm not going to do the entire painting over like a layer over with this type of paint uh, but I'm literally just embellishing um, certain points within the painting uh, including these fall trees right here so that's what I am doing is I'm just adding that little touch so I did all the front trees I probably will do some of the pine trees as well um, and then, you know, just use your artist opinion. Like if this was your painting, maybe you want to put a little bit of, um, you know, maybe take your, your palette knife and scrape across here with a little bit of heavy bodied paints, um, for some texture inside of the, the, um, the dock right here. So, Actually, now that I'm talking about it, I think I probably will do that with this painting. So now to add, let me let me just see what you're saying real quick. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, oh, hello, Zena. Thanks for being here. Um, and, and Zena says she can't wait to paint this. It's gorgeous. Oh, good. I can't wait to see what it looks like. And Zena, you're a creative warrior, so you have that inside the membership waiting for you already. So whenever you have time, um, no rush. You work at your own pace. And um, yeah, this is really um, a fun painting to do. Now, I'm going to start putting some different um, values in here of my trees, right? Because I don't want them just to be, I could leave it like that, but if I want to take it another step, instead of having this yellow tree, just all one color bright yellow, I could add in a little bit of orangish yellow, if that's even a word, um, for some depth inside of this um, and that's a little too bright as I'm touching down. I can see that. And this is a good example of if you, if you, you know, there's no mistakes in art. I just noticed that that was going to be a little too dark. So I just lightened up my color using my yellow with a tiny bit of orange in there. So I just want to add a little more depth to this tree. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a little bit of orange into my yellow. We always want to start with the darkest color into the lighter color because if we go the other way around, you're going to waste a ton of paints. <laughs> you're going to have to keep, you know, putting more on and more on to get the color that you want or the shade that you want. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So I'm just adding a little bit of, like I said, a little bit of a deeper tone in here um, just to give it some, some depth and... Uh, yeah, I'm liking that already. I don't have to go too crazy with that because I don't want to take away from the entire yellow of that tree, uh, but I'm just adding a little bit of orange in here in places where my mind is just imagining, oh yeah, there's probably some shade right there. Um, so that's, I'm just kind of trying to talk out, verbalize what I'm doing as far as what my brush is doing on the canvas. So hopefully that makes sense. As you know, if you are 
um, if you if you paint it's it's kind of hard to talk and paint <laughs> at the same time right because we're using our creative side of our brain um, even here where I just have those little uh, touch of with my bristle brush I touch down a little bit I'm thinking that the color that I'm using the tone that I'm using right now would look good in a couple of these spots so I'm just adding that in right there um, I hope that you can see see what's happening here sometimes you know when I'm doing a live I'm I'm wondering geez until I go back and look if you can actually see that on camera um, thank you Lisa though for telling me when I gave you the close-up shot that you could see the difference there and hopefully you still can as I'm painting along and adding these different tones um, into my yellow here so I don't want to add too much like I said because I don't want to take away from the yellow uh, but that's what I did was I just grabbed a little bit of yellow orange and kind of went over to give that a different tone now for my reds right there right here um, I for a deeper color for the reds I like to put a little bit of blue into my red to get like that shaded look um, onto my tree so I'm going to I thought I had blue some blue on my palette I do but it's kind of dried up now because I'm reusing my palette paper I'm gonna add a dab of this I think it's cobalt yeah I'm gonna add a dab of cobalt blue to my handheld palette Gloria thanks for being here and thank you so much you're so sweet um, so I'm just gonna add a little dab of that to my palette and I don't want to put too, too much in because then it's good. You know, when we do uh, red and blue, it's going to make uh, purple, right? But if we do equal parts. So I want to make sure that it's, um, you know, it still looks red, but it looks a little bit deeper. Um, let me see if I'm over here. No, you won't be able to see that. Let me see. Hopefully you can see this. All right. So... I'm going to just add a tiny bit of this cobalt blue to a glob of red here. And actually, I'm really liking that. I'm really liking that tone. We'll see how it looks on the canvas. And I've already kind of done this when I did my quick painting using my craft paints. But yes, I'm really liking this. I'm really liking that a lot. So I don't want to paint over all of my bright red that I put on there. And I'm just going in with this tone that I made. Um, just embellishing a little bit where my shaded parts already are on the tree. I'm really globbing this right onto my um, brush, by the way, because... I want this to show up. I want it to stand out. I want it to have a little bit of texture. Um, if you're one of my art customers and you're watching this, just letting you know this one will be um, available uh, for you. And um, yeah, I'm liking this, liking this right here. Very cool, very cool. So hopefully you can see that. I'll kind of move over and do a little bit in here as well and like i said if you add some embellishments on i typically will up the price on my painting 10 to 50 dollars depending on how much i use in supplies and how much time you know i spend embellishing my piece um whoops there we go and these, this painting is, you know, a design that I came up with. It is one that I gave to my membership uh, with the gold rights for them to turn around, create, and sell. Um, and this one is also one that, if you did the uh, paint and business challenge with me recently, um, you also had... Um, you also had this design inside of the paint and business challenge. So I'm really loving that. And I, I keep hitting my, my easel and then my, uh, my numbers falling down. <laughs> if you're not on my text list, 
here's the number right up here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, all you have to do is text me at um, 207-230-6018, and then you will be on my list, and you will know when I go live and all that fun stuff. And here's a little um, a little tip from me, too, if you want to grab a free gift um, on my text list. I do have one set up for you. So if you go to text this number, you just text the word guide to that number, then you will get my free art business guide. And um, it's totally awesome. It really is packed full of information. All right, I'm kind of running out of this glob. I'm gonna have to mix up another one here um, in a moment. Now, because reds are typically, um, so, even for me, right? Reds are typically like, oh geez, how do I get like a highlight with that? Um, it is okay, it really is, to like add a little bit of pink into it. Because like, oh, how do you highlight red without it looking pink, right? And does, you know, for me, you really do have to make like a pinkish color to do the highlight. But you can add, and I'm I'm getting a kind of messy here because I'm not using, I'm not separating my paint with my uh, palette knife, so bear with me. Hopefully it'll come out all right. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of pink right here. Well, I did. And then I'm gonna just put a few, and I mean a few highlights onto the red trees that I did. Uh, because if I put too much, then it's going to look kind of weird. <laughs> so I'm going to just add a few little pinks in here where I think, oh, maybe that's where the sun is hitting it the most, but I'm not going to go crazy. Not going to go too crazy. If we go too crazy with the highlights or the low lights on each subject, then it's going to take away from the, the, the whole subject. So you want to have like one base color. Oh, I, I probably should have taped this here, but bear with me. Sorry about that. My foot keeps hitting it. But you want to go with, uh, you know, the majority of your subject, especially if we're talking about trees here, um, with a one color, and then just add a few little highlights in there. If you're just joining me, I'm Amy from Amy Parker Art. I love to uh, teach you how to make money with your art. And right now I'm showing you how I'm embell embellishing with some heavier body paints um, <clears throat> some of these fall trees that I have made in this painting of mine that I've titled Solitude. And I'm just right now adding a little bit of pink to my red trees. Not a lot, but I just want some areas of this tree to just pop out a little bit. So hopefully you can see that. Um, I will take, I will take this off. Oops, hopefully I don't lo lose you. Huh, sorry about that. <laughs> I just dropped my camera. All right, so I want to just give you like a closer view here of what I just did. So can you see like I literally just touched down with like a little bit of pink. Now you can see a closer up version of like some of the depth that I started to put into the yellow. And then here again, a little bit of pink. And you can see on the reds where I mixed my blue into red to give it some depth. Um, this one, you can see it a little bit better probably. Just touch down. And when you go up close, it looks kind of weird, right? But then when you come back, look at what happens to the painting. Like your eye um, just kind of can see all of those different uh, tones and colors within your painting. And so while I'm showing you like me using the heavier body paints, this is a good example here. I like to have some of these gloopy things. Oops, I just touch it with my finger. Whoopsie. <laughs> but that way, I know I'm using all these fancy words like gloopy. I don't even know if that is a word. I doubt it. Uh, but basically, I want my painting to you know, even though I painted this really quick and fast, I wanted to take the time to go back to add some of these heavier bodied paints into some specific areas within 
the painting. So I hope that makes sense. And like I said, um, you can charge, well, you can charge what you want because you are the artist. I totally get that and understand. Thank you so much, Betty. She says that it's pretty. Um, but I typically would charge, um, like I said, depending on the time that I take and how much extra paint I use, I will charge between 10 and $50 extra than what I would if I did not do any of these embellishments. So hopefully that makes sense and kind of gives you like a rough idea. Um, just checking out your comments. I'm good, Gail. Thank you so much for being here. Um, oh, Gail says she wants to paint it again. Awesome. And yes, you most certainly can. Gail is also a creative warrior inside the membership. And this painting is in there for you. Um, thank you so much, Betty. Oh, spreading the love. That's awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I know what that code means. Sometimes they say, go ahead and paint the love. <laughs> I like to use that one too. So I really hope that this um, little tip on a simple way that you can embellish your paintings so that you can offer them to your customers uh, for even a little higher price um, in, you know, it looks beautiful, right? It really does add to the painting, to this design. And I'm so happy that you joined me today. Um, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to text the word guide if you have not gotten my free art business guide to 207-230-6018. Yes, I know this is backwards, but I was writing it backwards and got a little screwed up. <laughs> so hopefully uh, you can... You can read that, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, the, our business guide is an ebook that I do have. It's packed full of helpful information for your art business. Um, so yeah, I'm so thankful that you spent some time with me today. Don't forget to get on my list so that you know when I am live doing fun things for you. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you later.